Hello everyone, it's me, Adrian, and we're here to talk about books with Adrian again. And for today's book that we're going to be talking about, it's Silk. Silk is a comic book. It came out in 2015. Robbie Thompson is the writer of this book, and then he had uh, Stacey Lee, um, <clears throat> Marta Tello, and Ford to do the art for the comic book talking about Silk today because I had to read it for class. I am in a sequential arts class which is basically about comic books and so one of our assignments was we had to pick a comic book, talk about it, say what they did right, say what they did wrong. So I'm just killing two birds with one stone here telling you guys about what books I've been reading and also doing homework. Efficient. Yeah. Efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Efficient. So let's start with a summary of our good friend here Silk. So the back of the book blurb summary for Silk goes. <laughs> Cindy Moon exploded out of her bunker and into the Marvel Universe when she first learned she had been bitten by the same radioactive spider as the Amazing Spider-Man. Now as Silk, Cindy is on her own in New York searching for her past, finding her own future, and webbing up wrongdoers along the way. Now, none of that's wrong, but that gives off a very different feel and vibe from what the book is actually about. What actually is going on is Cindy Moon, who goes by Cindy Analog now, uh, she works for the Daily Bugle and she wants to learn about what happened to her family and why she was locked away in the bunker in the first place. And Black Cat is the big bad of this seven issue series. But don't worry folks, she has nothing to do with those questions. She has nothing to do uh, with Cindy Moon's family disappearing and she has nothing to do with Cindy Moon being locked away in a bunker. Nothing. Absolutely not. Don't you worry. So <laughs> let's get into it and uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the pacing of this book. It's not good. It's not good at all. It's actually pretty terrible. It's split into seven issues as I said and I have all seven inside of this uh, book right here. I bought like the, I think, I don't know if they're always called Omnibus, but that's how I know them as is the Omnibus. So there's seven issues. There's really like six, and there's really like five, because issue number three, I believe, is the one where they go and visit the Fantastic Four, and then the last issue is, is not really an issue. It's just literally Cindy trying to get from her job to this apartment complex to see if her brother is there or if it's a, a false alarm. But let's move on to the panels. So. I don't have a lot of complaints about the panels and I might like, you know, insert some like photos here and there so you can see what I'm talking about. The only thing that did come up is because it is in this like omnibus kind of kind of thing, the cover for the for the um whatever issue it is is just right next to it on the page. So there's a really confusing one, this one, where Black Cat is kicking Sandy Moon and then you see her fly like landing over here but they don't have anything to do with each other. It was actually it was actually this guy right here that did it. But it was just like I turn the page, I see this, what am I supposed to think? And so that was one of the things, like that really confused me. I think I went back a couple times and tried to figure that out until I was finally like, oh this must be the issue because the other thing is as you saw there's no like Silk volume four or anything like that is just the picture. This doesn't so much have to do with the panels, but I'm not exactly sure where to where to put this. They switch um drawing styles for each issue. So Stacy Lee did one through three and then five and six and then Anna Paula Martello did number four and then Tana Ford did number seven. Okay. Now, it's been a while since I read comic books, so this is how Stacy Lee draws. And then number four, I think, is the Fantastic Five one. So this is how Mar Marta Martello Martello draws. And then number seven, this is how Ford draws. I've just never seen that before like I know that they have guest artists usually on covers and stuff but I've never seen like where they're like inside of a series 
we're just going to change up the entire drawing style. And it was very confusing to me and like a little off-putting, like I really didn't like it. I mean, I feel like as artists, at least for me, one of one of the things I do as an artist is like you have to learn to draw different ways. Like if you know how to draw, you know how to draw. And so I kind of wish that they would have done that. I don't I don't dislike any of the styles in there. It's just it was confusing to me because I didn't know that that was going to happen. I didn't know what was going on. Maybe I'm like harping on this too much just because like I'm an artist and I'm sensitive to it. But it, you know, I'm also a consumer. Like I paid money for this and I'm not satisfied with the product at the at the end of the day. But all in all, like it just wasn't it wasn't good, which gets into the next thing. It was not a page turner at all. If I hadn't been required for a grade to finish this book like I was like hey professor this is the book I'm gonna read I'm gonna read silk he's like good write writing that down I would have just switched because it was it was not it was not interesting um I had to read it for a grade and I also really 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 wanted to know what happened to her family which as I spoil alert you never find out never the I'm, I'm you know what I don't really want people to read this so I'm just gonna spoil the whole damn thing for you at the end there's this giant bubble thing this this thing and that caption says probably the, it says the end of the world probably but this thing right here um it's the apocalypse apparently nobody knows what's going on and then number the the seventh issue is her talking to her therapist and her therapist being like well if the world doesn't end i want you to come back because we got a lot to talk about and then it's um j J. Jonah Jameson telling her, "Hey, I think there's a lead on your brother thing." Cause she tells she tells Triple J about what her family disappearing and how she's trying to find him. And he's like, "Okay, well, I'll check, you know, some of my police leads and see if I can help you." Now get back to work. I'm J. I'm Triple J. And at the end, it is her brother. She finds that out. He says, "Oh, hey, Cindy." And then they um they hug. And then the world ends. Like that's, she says, I'm here. I'm sorry for everything. I love you, Albert. Um, yeah, and this isn't my camera being like goofy or anything. It just fades into white. And then there's a little thing at the bottom that says there is only secret wars, which apparently was like their new 52 or something. Like they were like, oh, we're just gonna reboot. But guess what? Silk isn't in the secret war, so. Why did you, why did we end it? What? So, and yeah, we're just going to move on to the conclusion. So I had high hopes for this. I had really high hopes and I left very upset. She's a carbon copy of Spider-Man. She works for the Daily Bugle. She takes pictures of Silk for money. She has all of Spider-Man's power. She even is in this pseudo romance with Spider-Man. Like I think they might just be like friends with benefits. That's what the the comic led me to believe. She has three love interests and none of them go anywhere which is fine. I didn't need her to have any love interests because that wasn't what I was invested in but it's just the fact that you introduced a boyfriend she disappeared for 10 years. She sees him again on the street. He's like, where have you been? I know you didn't go to college like you said. Da 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 da. Never happens. She calls Spider-Man. They have this talk about how hard it is to be a superhero. And he's like, you want to come over? You want to stay in my place? And she's like, yeah, no. Doesn't matter. Never, never happens. She goes on a date with Johnny Storm. The date seems to be going pretty well. I mean, she kisses them at the end. They, they seem happy about it. Doesn't matter. Never happens. So it's like, why would you just introduce these threads if you're not gonna do anything with them? Nobody was asking for that. I certainly wasn't asking for that. I was very, I, want, I wanted to hear about Cindy Moon. I wanted to hear about Silk. I wanted to know what was going on with Silk's family, what was going on with Silk's parents. I wanted to know why Black Cat was there and the answer was no reason. She could have been anybody. She could have been Kingpin, Doc Ock, Green, maybe not Doc Ock. She could have been Kingpin, <laughs> Green Goblin, um, is he called Hammerhead? The one with the big head? Well, he don't got money. Any of the villains that have money and just, you know, big bad could have been. Like, it literally did not need to be Black Cat and sh should not have been Black Cat. And once again, Black Cat didn't know anything about her family, didn't know anything about why she got locked up in a bunker. The only reason she was even messing with Cindy Moon is because Cindy Moon is a crime fighter and was interrupting Black Cat's money crime flow. So Black Cat was like, well, you can either work for me 
or you can catch these hands. And Cindy Moon was like, square up, yo, I'm ready. So, yeah, could have literally been anybody and it just happened to be Black Cat and I thought that was really stupid and dumb. Um, yeah, it just, like, especially with the ending with it just all exploding, you don't know why, you never find out why. I guess I could read Secret Wars, but she's not in Secret Wars, so why would I read it? It just all felt like a big middle finger to me and I don't appreciate that. Like, I had to pay actual factual money for this and I received an unsatisfactory product. And I think that's something that we all need to remember. Like, no, they're not obligated to change things because I like them. They're not obligated to make couples get together because I want them to. They're not obligated to do anything. But at the same token, neither am I. I'm not obligated to buy this. If I didn't like it, then I'm not gonna buy anything else from you. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm not gonna buy any more Marvel products, especially not Silk Marvel products because the first product you gave me was bad. I did hear that she got rebooted. I don't care because this was terrible. This was terrible. It was ter- I, once again, paid real money. I have a family. I have a three-year-old. That was- Three-year-old clothes are cheap. I could have bought Avery an entire outfit for the same amount that I bought this- this omnibus of, of silk for. But that's it, because I feel like I'm starting to babble. So, I got- I hope you guys have- I hope you guys have a great day. I hope that if you guys are out here reading comics that they're a lot better than what I've been reading. If you have any recommendations for comics, I might look into them. If they're Marvel or DC, I'll look into them. I'm, I can't give you much more than that. So you guys all have a nice day and I'll see you later. Bye.